Moonshadow by Carl Durfee. Illustrated by Sylvia Davila and Veronica Bray Durfee. Long, long ago, when the planets were young and the stars in the heavens were still being flung, the sun started sending its rays all around to the planets who were so gravity bound. And these rays helped to shape the new solar system, though the planets all tried, they could not resist them. The ones near the sun were so blasted each day that it ripped and tore most of their gases away. The ones further out held on to theirs tightly, one spawn on its side, the others uprightly. And as time carried on, the eons slipped past. The planets all traveled through space ever fast. The sun felt distinguished, important and proud. He let everyone know it. He yelled it out loud. He said, I create light and it goes where it's told. I divide things in two, one warmed and one cold. You will always know for the difference is stark. One side will be lit while the other is dark. The planets all listened to the words of the sun and they knew that he was right as these things he had done. But they quietly wished for a way they could light the dark half of themselves, the side they called night. And they all carried on in their heavenly race through the giant expanse of the limitless space. After so many eons had gone in a flash, the third planet in line had a terrible crash. Earth crashed with another named Thea that day. The blast was so strong it made planet Earth sway. The result of the crash was the birth of the moon, and they raced on together, their orbits in tune. On the dark side of Earth, in the cold and the gloom, a thin sliver of light shined on Earth from the moon. The Earth said, What's this? I see light on both sides. The sun interrupted, Stop spreading those lies. As everyone knows, I am light all alone. You all have one lit and one darkness-filled zone. But the very next night, as the Earth and moon twirled, the sliver got bigger and it shined on the world. The earth said, see there, it's shining more now. And the planets all looked with a gasp, asking how. And the sliver kept growing night after night until it was full, a great disc round and bright. The planets all marveled and the sun was incensed. What was this strange glimmer they were seeing dispensed? Then just as it started as a thin slice of light, the light started to shrink by a thin slice each night. And the sun yelled, that's right, your light's running out. I alone light these worlds and my powers lack doubt. The next night, the last sliver of light disappeared from the edge of the moon and the giant sun sneered. The sun barked at the moon. You see, I am the power. I blast through the cosmos as all of you cower. The planets all trembled and the planets all cringed at the thought of the sun's massive power unhinged. Then the moon cleared her throat and in a sweet, gentle voice, your unrestrained arrogance leaves me no choice. We're so very tired of your endless aggression, so I'll block out your light just to teach you a lesson. Then the gentle, kind moon with the tiniest girth started moving between the sun and the earth. And as she did this so careful and slow, her moon shadow cast on the earth down below. When the sun saw this, he roared with disgust. Who dares block my light? I will make you combust. He erupted intensely. You will pay, he declared. And he screamed as he burst and he fired and flared. But the moon didn't budge. She spoke not a word. With the sun spitting fire, the planets all stirred. Who was this brave, lonely moon who resists the will of the almighty sun in their midst? But she did so resist. In her silence she sat, 
in the line of the light where the seething sun spat. And he raged and he rumbled with words and with thoughts until his whole surface was covered with spots. But then the sun stopped. He stammered and spluttered. How can this be? The giant st sun stuttered. The moon said, I reflect light compared to you, just a spark. I change it and send it back into the dark. And as long as I orbit with earth every year, I will bring to the dark all my light and my cheer. And just to remind you with all of your might, every now and then I will block out your light. And when this happens, if you quiet your lips, I vow to keep short my solar eclipse. The sun became silent, he had nothing to say. His solar flares stopped and his spots went away. And every planet who'd nervously watched the sun become angry and flary and splotched. All knew that their dark sides need not be so if they find a nice moon with their gravity toe. So they started collecting from near and afar and the eons moved on as they circled their star. Now Phobos and Deimos orbit Mars in a pattern while Enceladus and Titan are circling Saturn. There's Triton, the moon that Neptune has caught, while Europa and Ganymede fly past the red spot. There are so many more, far too many to mention, who all serve as a beautiful sunlight extension. And they all bring their love and light to the dark, in spite of the sun's very loud, angry bark. So the eons continue to pass so concisely as the moon passes through all her phases precisely. She continues today. If you glance at the moon, you'll see changes each night in the sky with stars strewn. And for thousands of years, she's been watched and admired. She's kept time for the ancients, our dreams she's inspired. And if you ever happen to hear someone say that the moon will block out the sunlight today, remember that this is just a reminder, warning the sun to be humble and kinder. <laughs>